Okay, here's a little pulse motor I decided to call the Yearling Quest. And um, it's a little different direction than I've gone with these uh, pulse motors. Um, I wanted something in a contained box that was uh, a display item. And something I could set on the shelf that wasn't very big, and didn't make any noise, and then ran for many months. And I've gone different directions if you've watched some of my videos. And this is uh, my latest situation here. It's a um, two-pole rotor. If you freeze frame this, you probably see it. It's a drinking straw with uh, magnets on the end of it. And the um, little driver unit is now on a little um, board. I went ahead and soldered it up. Uh, the main difference on this one is the coil is not super fine wire, it's 34 gauge, uh, measures 50 ohms and it's running on that um, AAA battery that uh, sits in the back there and this was Slider's idea to use this little battery holder from a flashlight as a support and I had the idea to just put a AAA in that and use that as a battery holder for the motor. The uh, support right here is a simple fixes idea to hold the needle stable and that made all the difference now you have to have it positioned just right and the magnet down here is underneath a um, cell phone glass cover it's the hardened glass covers you can buy on eBay or Amazon that go on the surface of your your iPhone to keep it from getting scratched it's a hardened tempered glass that the needle runs on and the uh, magnets underneath underneath there and then there's a magnet up here with an adjustment screw and this is the circuit and it's the same circuit I've been showing before it's dad has a complementary transistor circuit and then modified and modified and modified by different people including me um, Theodore Pauly was the one I got this idea for the two pole rotor and there's a bunch of other people and, and like I say sliders the one that uh, is still working on this project too and uh, I've gone a little different direction here. I just used a AAA battery, but I knocked it down with a 4K resistor. And then there's a 4K resistor going to the emitter on the PNP. And that's the only other component. The LED is uh, between the collector and the ground, the negative rail. And then this coil, like I say, is not the super fine wire. It's 50 ohms, 34 gauge to spin that uh, two-pole rotor around. I had to go this direction to get that rotor spinning fast enough and become stable enough for this to work. And the idea was to make this go a year, if I could. Now, it's a 160 microamp draw, but it's not all the time. It's being pulsed. And because it's a two-pole rotor, it's only pulsed twice per revolution. And that's what I'm thinking. I might get a year out of it. So I'm just going to call this the Yearling Quest motor. And I'll put that somewhere uh, out of harm's way and see if it'll go. Uh, I worked on this for about a week, uh, trying to get this where I wanted it to be and the values that I wanted. And that LED at night shows up real, real well. So it's something to see if it's running in the dark, because you, you need to see if they're running in the dark. Sometimes you get in the middle of the night, you want to know if they're running well. If you can see the LED blink, you know it's running. I may put it up there on that shelf um, along with the other motors. Uh, we'll see. But anyway, that's the uh, latest thing that I've got going on here was this uh, boxed shelf item that uh, you see by the size of the pencil. It's not very big and it makes no noise. And uh, the battery here might last a year. And that's why I'm calling it the Yearling Quest. Thanks for watching.